<laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, it's Let okay. Are you embarrassed? It's okay, everybody. Everybody poops and farts. And burps. It's okay. We've got him situated. Um, welcome back to my channel. Uh, as you can tell from the title today, we are going to talk about our birth story and introduce you to this little guy. Um, we're gonna let him settle down before we mess with him too much though. So um, yeah, I guess we're gonna start. You ready to tell it? From the beginning. Oof. So um, most of you know, but if you're new here, um, this is an IVF baby. We went through IVF to get pregnant. And so if you want to hear that story, I'll link, um, that video up in, you know, wherever that corner is, this one or this one, I can't even remember. And you can listen to that. So you just know, like we've already had it hard up until this point. And if you don't know our background, he's a doctor, he's a family medicine doctor. <laughs> And I'm a uh, labor and delivery nurse, or I, I was up until a year ago. So we both have backgrounds in um, labor. <laughs> Making babies. And in, yeah. uh, uh, all the process of having a baby and all that stuff, we're, we're not new to this. And we decided what we wanted was to go to a birth center. So we went to Vanderbilt's birth center, which is called Baby & Co. It's in Nashville. And uh, they're all Vanderbilt trained midwives. I think they all came from Vanderbilt. Um, and I think that's a pretty good background yep. to like start off with. Yep. Okay, so on October 20th, <laughs> I went to bed around 11 o'clock and he had the hiccups. I could feel him having the hiccups. I laid down, I'd been in bed for like five minutes. And a little trickle of something and I thought mm -hmm. I think maybe peed my pants a little bit which you know happens in the late you know later stage of, of pregnancy so I wasn't that concerned and then it was like ooh, that's a little more than I normally feel if I pee myself or if he kicks me in the bladder and so then I got up and walked to the toilet and by the time I got to the toilet it was just pouring out like a lot I filled up the toilet like three or four times and it was good clear fluid not anything wrong like totally normal everything was good and I'd had contractions with the whole day before but then they had petered out and then right when my water broke I started having contractions again um okay so after I found figured out that I had for sure broken my water like went to the toilet and then I he was in his office working so I yelled at him and I was like, I'm pretty sure my water broke. And he's like, really? So he, were you pretty confident that my water had broken? Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's not, we, like I said, we've got a background in this. So <clears throat> I was, I know what amniotic fluid looks like and smells like I was a hundred percent sure that my water was broken. Sometimes it can be a little hard to tell. It can. But yeah. in this case, it was not hard to tell. It was a copious amount yes. of amniotic fluid. And so my contractions started immediately up again and they got closer and closer. So we called, first we called the midwife and let them know that my water had broke. And she was like, okay, we'll labor at home as long as you feel comfortable. And then when you get ready to come in or you think that you need to come in, call us back. So it's midnight on the 21st and Nisha's water broke at 11.11 p.m. And now she's having some pretty darn vigorous contractions. So she's in the tub and we're gonna try to jump on here and record some info for you guys, keep you up to date on what's going on and uh, without revealing any nudity or violence. That's not cute. <laughs> Get the phone out of my face. It's not cute, but it's beautiful. Yes. It's yeah. Nice. So how's it going? It's going, apparently. <laughs> it's weird, but that's good, right? So you were just laying in bed? Yeah, and then I felt a little trickle, and I thought, ooh, I just peed myself. But then it was like another trickle, and then it was like a big gush, and then I stood up, and it was like a lot of water. And then I sat on the toilet, and it was even more water, so I think I lost like literally two liters of fluid <laughs> just from that yeah 
And the contractions are harder now? Much harder. They were crazy, like sporadic during the day, but now they're pretty consistently sucky. Now it's business time. It's serious. It's serious. serious. And so I got in the bathtub and I was laughing in between contractions for about 20 minutes. And then I was laughing a little less. And then by an hour, I was on the toilet. <laughs> Saying, you need to call the midwife. To, yeah. And I was timing them with my big toe. I had my, my phone on the floor. And I would hit it with my big toe and do the timing. And I, like they say, it needs to be five minutes apart and at least a minute. And I was like, they're a little less than a minute, but we, we got to go. Like, I, I know I, <laughs> we got to go. And so we called the midwife. And by that point, I couldn't put together two sentences and we're only 10 minutes away from the birth center so she was like yeah come on in you can't see me very good but it is 1 11 a.m and we are headed to the birth center because i am having very very strong intense contractions at this point and um yeah i'm just ready to get there get settled in and um, so I don't have to move when it gets even more intense. So that's where we're headed. And yeah, we'll update you when we get there. Ken had to run in to get my hydro flask because he forgot it. But I think, I think we're pretty prepared otherwise. So yeah, still positive, still very happy, no fear, just contractions they ain't no joke don't let nobody tell you otherwise <laughs> so we get there right before we leave I start puking my guts up we get to the birth center continue to puke my guts up um, they checked me and I was five to six so halfway <coughs> um, you dilate to ten and so I was already over halfway dilated before we even got to the birth center uh, then I got in the birthing tub and I labored there for, I don't even know. Like at that point, I zoned probably, out. Probably two hours in the tub. Yeah. So she had to warm it up twice. What time did we get there? One, right? Mm, something. We got about, we got to the birth center about one o'clock. And then I kind of like found, I was in a, like a headspace. I didn't really, wasn't paying attention to what was going on around me. He was. Um, so we got there, there was a midwife and there was a nurse, and like I said, I wasn't really that aware of my surroundings because I was trying to like really stay focused and we'd done the Bradley method training, hypnobirthing training, all that stuff. So I was trying to do all that stuff, like breathe through the contractions and, and not fight the contraction and like, you know, welcome the contraction and like all that woo woo crap, okay? <laughs> And I did great, right? Oh yeah, yeah, you did great. Yeah, so I labored in the tub and I, would try to change positions and um, so finally I would like I was on my left side then I was on my right side in the tub then I got on my hands and knees and they were like okay maybe get out of the tub we'll go to the bed uh, we'll sit on the toilet for a while they tried to give me switch positions because and then she checked me and I was complete which was less than two hours yeah. after we got there so I went from zero to complete extremely fast like yeah. three, beautiful three hours. Yeah. like you can't ask for a better zero to ten for a first time mom usually it takes much longer for your first baby to dial it all the way and uh that's where it stopped being good <laughs> so i was complete and <clears throat> they let me push on my own for a long time and here's where i have a little disclaimer like anything i say that's in, neg in a negative way from this point out is not a reflection on the birth center or the midwives or anything i'm just sharing my experience and how i felt that um, maybe things, I, w I would have liked things to go differently. But it's not anything against them. I wasn't treated badly. They took good care of me, all that good stuff. However, um, since I had done Bradley Method and hypnobirthing, I had basically read and been taught that bearing down wasn't necessarily needed. And so like would, taking a breath and holding. Yeah, and holding it. Like I'm a labor and delivery nurse. And so what we do is we get the girl up in the stirrups, we pull her legs back, we say, hold your breath, count to ten, we do it three times back to back to back. Now that in midwife land is considered 
not the way that you need to push. You let the woman push the way that she needs to be, you know, like nature's telling her, um, that kind of thing. And the baby will come on its own. There's no need to do all of that. I didn't have an epidural, that kind of thing. And so I wasn't coached on pushing. They let me push the way that I wanted to push, um, which was technically not ineffective because he was at three plus station, which meant he was where he needed to be, but he couldn't take that next step to come out. And so I was allowed to push that way for about three hours. Mm -hmm. And then when the third hour came around, then um, the midwife that was with me, who I didn't have a relationship with, she was the one on call, I didn't know her, we didn't really bond that well, like I would have wanted us to bond. I didn't really feel a connection to her like I would have wanted to. And so, like, I didn't have that. I didn't feel like I was bonded to her. Like, we didn't have a rapport. So, I couldn't really listen to anything that she was saying because I was already in so much pain at that point because he'd been in the birth canal for three hours. And um, so, I ended up pushing the way that I needed to be pushing for that next hour, but I had already hit my limit. You can only push for four hours at the birth center. And so, um, I was complete. He was all the way where he needed to be for four and over at four hours. It was like four and a half hours mm -hmm. that I pushed at the birth center before the room was ready at Vanderbilt. And so they were like, well, you gotta be transferred. You can't deliver here, which was like everything that I wanted was <clears> being <throat> thrown at the door at that point, which we had a birth plan, but I've always said my birth plan is very open. Like we were open to interventions should they be needed, all that stuff. We weren't like, anti anything right so and just to be clear you had pushed in multiple positions yes you had changed Everything. you had you had labored on your side you had labored on hands and knees mm -hmm. i used you the had, peanut i used everything yeah you labored in the lithotomy chair. i mean yeah you on also the birthing, the birthing chair. chair right in the tub yeah, i yeah. pushed pretty much every, in every position you could possibly yeah. push in and i think if <clears throat> We, he was probably a little asynclitic, which meant that his head was a little bit crooked. Where it should have been straight on like this, it was kind of like yeah. to the side. Like this was what was the presenting part instead of this. And so that was kind of probably causing a lot of the problems. Or my contractions would have just pushed him out, no matter how I was pushing. Ooh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Toto's always very concerned when he cries. He wants to make sure he's okay. So they got me a room at Vandy and um, we didn't take an ambulance. We, asked, we had to get in our car and drive, which was, I mean, ambulance wasn't gonna make me more comfortable and it would have cost more money. So that was yeah. fine, but, but- It was kind of awkward But it was having to walk out to the parking garage. It was like, this is going backwards. This is not yeah, the way I'm yeah. supposed to be going. Yeah. So I'm walking with his head literally like sitting halfway out of my vagina. Basically, like he's not crowning yet, but he could be at any time, right? He's way down in your pelvis. He's deep. Yeah. And my, I'm in a lot of pain, yeah. like 20 out of 10, because <laughs> you know, I've been in labor this long and complete. Like, most people don't stay complete that long, yeah. usually, they've had a baby at that point. And so, I have to ride in the car. Yeah. It's not a long drive, but when you are in labor, it's a very long drive. So we get there, have to walk through the parking lot, get in the elevator, ride up the elevator. By the time we get to labor and delivery, the floor, um, my labor and delivery nurse was there to meet us and she was great. Um, she got me fixed up. I immediately said, I want an epidural and I don't want a student. Don't you dare let a student in here. Vanderbilt is a teaching hospital, if you didn't know that. It's, and it's a great hospital, but I don't want, and I love students. I was a student, I get it, you need to learn, but not on someone who's been in labor as long as I had been in labor. I didn't want an epidural. <coughs> that was gonna be half-ass. I wanted a good one because I didn't want one to begin with, but by being transferred to Vanderbilt, that increased my risk for a C-section. 20 times? Yeah. 20 times So I risk, wanted yeah. to go ahead and have that in because if something happened to him and they had to take me back to section and they couldn't get a spinal in, they would have to put me under and then I would be asleep for his birth. And so I knew I didn't want that. So I went ahead and got an epidural, best thing ever. Oh my God. <laughs> I had a great epidural. <clears throat> some people get, I mean, that's not, that doesn't always happen. Some people still feel stuff and some mm -hmm. people have really bad experiences. There's a lot of risk with epidurals. I was, I had somebody who'd been doing them a very long time, which I very specifically asked for, which you can do. You didn't know that. You can ask for someone else. You don't have to have a student. You get that choice. Um, but mine was awesome. <laughs> I didn't yeah. feel anything. 
So they let me rest for an hour and then I pushed again for another hour with the epidural. Uh, he still wasn't gonna move. So then they brought in the OBGYN. She talked to us and gave us our options. We had the option of doing a vacuum deli assisted delivery where they put a vacuum on his head and sucked him out. However, if that popped off, we would have to go to C-section. So the other option was to do a forceps delivery, which has its own risk, but she was fairly certain that she could get him out with forceps and we wouldn't have to go to C-section. And so that's what we ended up doing. Yeah. After he grilled the doctor a yeah. few, for <laughs> like how many times have you done this? And like, you know, he was taking care of me. Yeah. So um, then they came, like the room was flooded with people, literally every, like we had NICU nurses and extra nurses and uh, two baby nurses and, uh, the epidural or the anesthesiologist came back and gave me even more medicine, which made, like, I could kind of move my legs, but then she gave me so much because I was having a forceps delivery, like, and I think they all felt really bad for me at that point, so they drugged me up really well. I could not feel anything, nothing, not even pressure, and uh, so the OBGYN and talked me in. This whole time, he's doing wonderful. His strip is perfect. He never, his heart rate never wavered at all. He was, he kept me from having a C-section. Uh, Cause if he had dropped, they would have just took me back. But he did great the entire time. So she put the forceps on and, oh God, yeah. I couldn't look. And I really wanted to see him come out. I wanted to put like literally all the things I wanted to happen did not happen, but it didn't matter. Cause I got a healthy baby, it was fine. Uh, and we did what we needed to do, but I could not, because I know what a forceps delivery looks like. So I just had to close my eyes until they put him on top of me. And then we had ourselves a little baby. And uh, since he was had a little bit of trauma coming out the birth canal, they had to, she left him on me as long as she could, but he was retracting and like, I knew he was and he knew he was like, but she took him and brought him straight back. She didn't give him any medicine or poking or prodding or anything. She brought him straight back as soon as he started screaming, so. He got plenty of skin to skin, belly to belly. Mm -hmm. He got to do the belly crawl. He mm -hmm. got to, to root and mm -hmm. look at you and yeah. bond with you and get your skin bacteria on him. And yeah, yeah. yeah he, he did great. And then uh, they he latched on immediately. Uh, our breastfeeding has been easy. Thank God, that's like the only thing that went right. Um, so I did obviously have a tear. When you have a forceps delivery, you're, you're just gonna have a tear. It is what it is. And so I did not only have an external tear, I had a sulcus tear, which is an internal tear. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I didn't realize how bad that would suck. <laughs> so I'll do a whole nother video on like my postpartum stuff because that's a whole video in itself. But, so I did have a tear and a lot of stitches, and but my bleeding was really good, so um, he was perfect. The only thing is the next day, he was a little jaundiced, but he had bruising. And when babies have bruising, that naturally is gonna up their bilirubin. Also, he's breastfed, so the bilirubin is gonna be high. So they tested him in the morning, and then they were gonna retest him so to make sure it was coming down. They retested him, and then they lost his blood. Yeah. My little baby, yeah. who's been through so much already. So then they, like, oh, it wasn't pretty. I was pissed because, you know, he'd already been through so much and how are you gonna lose a tube of baby blood? Yeah. Get it together, Vanderbilt. Yeah. I was pretty pissed. They had to stick him again. We were supposed to be discharged at two, but because they lost his blood, we got out of there at like 10 p.m. But I was going home, dang it. I was not staying there yeah. another night. And so we left. And then he had to be stuck again at the pediatrician's office. And so, but he's obviously, he's fine. No, no more jaundice or anything like that. Jaundice is pretty normal for a breastfed baby. Yeah. It's nothing to be very concerned about. We were not concerned about it, but um, yeah, poor thing. Had to be stuck way too many times on his poor little precious heels. But yeah, so he came into the world and we named him Charles William Beckett and so the reason he's named that is, be, so we, like I said, we did IVF, but we only had one embryo. He's the only one we had. We don't have any left over. There's none in a freezer somewhere. He was it. It was only it. And um, my grandpa passed away end of November of last year. And so we found out, well, the fertility clinic called me and said, you have one egg and that's good. Do you want to know if it's a boy or a girl? And I said, yes. And they said it was a boy. And so I wanted to name him after my grandpa. So his name is William B. 
And so literally in that moment, Beckett came into my name, William Beckett. So I knew that that was his name. And then we added on Charles because we both have um, family members named Charles as well. And we just wanted him to have like a really significant name, I guess, which uh, he does. (laughs) So that's where his name comes from. And, but we call him Beckett or Beck or B. So, um, but my mom kind of calls him Charlie sometimes. He can like, but he's going by Beckett. That's what his, but you know, people are going to call your kid what they're going to call your kid. We've accepted that already, but. What else? Anything else? Did I forget mm-hmm. anything? <clears throat> I'd just like to add that, and you can put this back up in another place if you want to. Like during the four hours she was pushing at the birth center, she was so in her zone. Like she was complete, she was having 100% contractions, and she, in between contractions she would just rest and and breathe and relax and get ready and then during the the contractions I mean she pushed like a champ but after that four four and a half hours when they said no you got to go to the hospital yeah, it's it. like she lost it because like you broke it kind of broke the trance right mm-hmm. you were almost like you were in a like a some kind of focused yeah. meditative I was trance in my zone yeah yeah basically and that mm-hmm. was it when they told me that I had to leave, it was like, I, I didn't give up, but I gave up trying to control it. Gave in some, yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. Which like, is understandable. The pain just yeah. like literally came on. Because yeah. before then, I was kind of like tolerating it. Yeah, but then very then, well. Very after well. that, I was like yeah. screaming my yeah. head off. And so <laughs> the entire drive over to Vanderbilt... The parking garage walk and to the poor young lady in the garage at, at Vanderbilt who you were probably thinking about having kids and then you saw her walk by and you're sorry. like nope forget it we're sorry about that yeah uh, because she just she gave into the pain at that point yeah. because it's like what can you do I'm gonna have to get in the car yeah and I, I was like I don't know should do I push do I not push I can't really help but push but I, I want to have him so it wouldn't be that bad if I had him in the car right yeah but yeah. then like so then it was even more disheartening that I didn't have him in the car yeah and i didn't have him in the elevator and i didn't have him when i got to the room like he was just not coming out he was not coming out if because even if i like i'm we've had experiences with different women different births different body types it doesn't matter if the baby is coming and going to come you cannot keep a baby in that's right yeah like Uh, i've seen women try to keep a baby in you cannot do it so if he was going to come out he would he would have come out he was just in there in a position that I could not push him through. Yeah. It was not gonna happen. So if like if he was gonna come out, he would have came out on the drive over there. But I mean I like sat in the room waiting for the epidural and he wasn't coming out. Yeah. <laughs> and then after you that. had the epidural in place, you pushed for another hour, hour and a half. Yeah, and I thought just to try. And sometimes when you get an epidural that like relaxes right. you and then the baby just comes out and I thought and I was on my side, so I thought, I'm gonna wake up and he'll be like crowning. No. no, and then because I, no. I was so I rested for an hour, but I was still having contractions, so he should have been still moving down. He was not moving at all. Then I pushed for another hour. He didn't move at all. I think it was just like I was so tired, and I'm still in pain. Three weeks later, he's three weeks old today. That now that we're doing this video, he's three weeks old. So, oh, okay, <laughs> just spit his passy out at me. <laughs> but now that we're you know here everything's fine like my birth story is not what i wanted it to be but he's here and that's really all that matters right baby that's right that's right so we'll insert some pictures and um i'll put the video clips in that we we're gonna vlog this and uh yeah <laughs> you got a little hand the the labor progressed so quickly i didn't even literally didn't have time to get the camera out or even think about that we vlogged at the house or at the apartment, and that's it. I think I got one little video at the birth center. Did you? Like 10 seconds, but that's it. <laughs> Maybe. I don't and know. I, I meant to tell him the video when the baby came out. He took a lot of pictures, so I'll put those in here too. But um, So we didn't get video of him coming out, but like I'm surprised that he took pictures because everything happened so dramatically, so not the way that we were wanting it to go, and fast. Like I had him in 12 hours. And I would have had him within 
six or seven if I had just went the way that it was supposed to go. So, I mean, my labor was extremely fast. They just, you know, went yeah. down on the sugar in that last six hours. <laughs> they did some interventions at the birth center that were kind of like, um, pointless. I felt like they gave me a popsicle that made me throw, I was already throwing up and it was so sweet. It just made me throw up more. They started IV of D5, which is like sugar water to give me more energy. I mean, that wasn't going to help me at that <clears> point. Like, I see where they wanted to do something. You know what I thought the other day? Like, I thought I should have whipped out my salt. I should have gave you some salt because that might have actually helped. Yeah. But, I, I was drinking water the entire time. Like, I took it <clears> out, but then I would, like, throw it right back up. But I still don't think I was dehydrated. Oh, yeah. I had, every time I had a contraction, I would have a muscle cramp. Yeah. In my li in my legs. So not only, and honestly, that hurt worse than my contraction pain, if you can believe it. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Because it was on top of my contraction yeah. pain, I would have a, like, god-awful thigh muscle spasm. Is awful. Like, I, I don't know if I'm having another baby. Let's just put it that way. But, yeah, that was the main things that we were just like. And it just wasn't the birth experience that I was expecting from a birth center model. But they are Vanderbilt Midwife Southern. It's not like they were hippies. You know what I mean? Like, they came, they went to Vanderbilt, not the farm with Anna Mae. So, um, maybe that had something to do with it. But I bonded really, really well with my labor and delivery nurse. She was great. Um, she's basically me. If I could have just labored myself, yeah. <laughs> which I don't know if they thought maybe we could, because I was a, I am a labor and delivery nurse and he's a doctor. If they just thought that we didn't want them to tell us what to do, maybe. Maybe, maybe that's what it was. Because I, I didn't feel like you got n nearly as much coaching right. as I thought you should have gotten and could have gotten. And doctors and nurses make the worst patients in the world. And so Misha and I are always very conscious if we go to a healthcare provider to, to take off our nurse hat and take off our doctor hat and just be patients. We were 100% in the patient world. And, and that's what yeah. we were doing. And about a thousand times during the, the four hour pushing, I wanted to take over and say, okay, all right, we've tried that, now let's try this. But that was not my role, I was told to stay uh, behind Nisha and play with her hair and rub her shoulders. He did exactly and what I did. he was supposed to do. He and did. gave her a drink of water between yeah. each contraction. He kept me hydrated. And kept my mouth shut. And then when we got to the hospital, he did a job there, which was to take over and make sure that they didn't do anything that I didn't want. Yeah. Because yeah. at that point, I knew I would be yeah. like, yeah. Although I honestly was so much more in control of the hospital than I ever thought I would be. Yeah. Like I was calm. You were very Because he could. So instead of the midwife like dropping us off, he dropped me and the midwife off. So I was without him for a good, like, yeah. 15 minutes. Took forever to find a spot. To right. Park. So uh -huh. I was pretty pissed about that because yeah. obviously I would have rather had him with me. But, yeah. um, so I had to do it myself, which kind of was the point of having him be part of the plan. We're like, if we, we yeah. already had, if we go to the hospital, because we knew that was a possibility. Like, we were prepared. Mm. If we go to the hospital, this is your job. You do this, 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 and this. And so instead of him being there to do that, I had to do it all yeah. while I'm in for probably Later, 30 minutes. Complete. Probably. It was at least 15. It, yeah. Maybe, I don't, like, I have no idea how much mm. time passed in that, you yeah. know. So, he, well, he, they were already in the room fixing to do my epidural when he came into the room. So, I had to, like, take care of yeah. stuff that I didn't really want to take care of. Yeah. Because that, we had made a plan for yeah. him to do that for me. So, I was kind of aggravated. Yeah. And a big compliment yeah. to Vanderbilt uh, University Medical Center because... I, we both realize as a nurse and a doctor that oftentimes women's birth plans for the staff is just a pain, it's pain in our butt. Nice. It's a pain in our butt, I know that. to be honest. Yeah, we've been on the other side. And so, but they were, they were very respectful of, they, they delayed, they, they delayed the cord clamping until the cord had stopped pulsating and was completely flat. still and deflated yeah. and flat. They gave her skin to skin. As soon as they, uh, they, they very quickly assessed him because he was having a little bit of retraction, but they gave her gave him back to Nisha immediately. He had a ton of skin to skin. Uh, they dimmed the lights 
and uh, they just got to bond. And, and yeah, they get everything that I wanted. Yeah, yeah. They were really respectful of the birth plan, which I was, I'm uh, highly complimentary of them for that because not all hospitals will do that. Well, it's hard to, especially in you know, a like, like technically I was an emergency right. like, and, patient. And that really comes down to the labor delivery nurse, but nurse was wonderful. She didn't do any of that. She honored the entire birth plan mm -hmm. and we're very happy about that. And they did everything in the room. Some of them weren't very happy that I want, like after we got to mother baby. Yeah, he never left our site after yeah. he was born. Uh, he had to have a little ultrasound because of the jaundice and some other stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I went with him. I was his uh, patient transport the entire time. Yeah. And he didn't leave our site because uh, we didn't want any interventions done. And a lot of times in a hospital setting, it's just a knee jerk. It's a habit mm -hmm. to do. Oh, we're going to do this, and this, and this to the baby. While I've got him in the nursery, I'll go ahead and do all this stuff. Yeah, things happen all the time. I know I was a nurse. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mistakes happen. And so nurses are humans. They're not robots. Yeah. Every time they would come for a, a little test or something, Nisha was like, "Don't leave his side." Yeah. So I didn't. But they did. The only thing that's the only thing they took him for. Yeah. Everything else they did at the bedside because I was like, "Can you do that in here, please?" Yeah. They didn't like it, but they did it. Well, and we just thank that you. one didn't like it. Yeah. The other ones yeah. were like, "Sure." Yeah, and we thank you for, for doing that. Yeah. Well, you know, there's this thing they have to do where they squeeze the crap out of their foot, and it is an unco it's uncomfortable to do in front of parents because maybe the mom doesn't know that that's going to happen. But I was like, I know that he's going to scream. It's fine. I just want you to do it in here. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Still working on that head control. <laughs> you think he wants to say hi? Is he in a good mood? I don't know. He's. Let's see. You want to come out? You want to come out? Come out of your cocoon. Making a face. No. Toto's watching you. He's making sure. Oh. There he is. Charles William Beckett. <laughs> hey, oh, he weighed seven pounds, ten ounces, yep. and was twenty one and a quarter inches long, mm -hmm. and he was born at twelve fourteen PM on October twenty first. Yes. He's perfect. Yeah. Ten fingers, ten toes. Yeah, and we love him. Two balls, one penis. <laughs> yeah. You laughed, but it's a mom's no, check you that. You gotta count that immediately. stuff immediately. <laughs> gotta count all the parts. All the parts are there. He is perfect. He's the best baby. He sleeps through the night already. He's only had one really bad night, and that was kind of our our fault because we let him sleep too long during the day because I had to go to the doctor because um, that's in, that's coming up in a different video. But uh, yeah, he's. Pretty perfect. We couldn't ask for a better baby. I don't know how we got so yep. lucky because I think we were pretty horrible children. So. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed our um, dramatic birth story. <laughs> Those of my friends who know me very well were like, we're not surprised yeah. at all that you had a dramatic birth story. I'm like, who? It's called the nurse curse. Basically, if you are a nurse, you're going to not get it the way that you want it it just doesn't happen for nurses for some reason we're just it's not gonna happen but we were prepared for it and that's why we weren't i wasn't devastated when we had to be transferred i was just kind of pissed yeah but it wasn't like oh no this isn't what i wanted i was just like oh. get this baby out of me yeah i was over it i was like fine it's fine moving forward yeah. give me my baby that's right and so that's what happened and yeah they did and we're still healing and recovering but Good. Absolutely. To add? No, no. Yeah. Just thanks to everybody that, that played a small or a large part. Yeah. Thanks to the obstetrician who had the most uh, excellent Simpson forcep technique I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, it's just smoothest Simpson delivery I've ever seen. It was beautiful. It was a thing of beauty. Yeah. Even though there were forceps involved. Yep. Yeah. Everybody was great. And uh, I don't ever want to see you again. <laughs> we'll see you next time.